Hi, I'm Chip Sadarsky. I'm here with FP to talk about uh, my image series, Captara. Welcome to Forbidden Planet TV. I'm Andrew Sumner. This returning to Forbidden Planet TV is Chip Zadarsky. How are you, mate? Ooh, doing good. Yourself? I am very well, thank you. Very well indeed. Um, good. so with Image Comics, you're about to return to your creator-owned title, Captara, which we've not seen since the first series in 2015. Not seen on the printed comic book page. Yeah, yeah, it's been a while. <laughs> um, life gets in the way of comics, you know. Uh, yeah, we, uh, myself and the my co-creator, Kagan McLeod, um, we came up with this book in 2015, put out 2015 and 2016. And then uh, after the first five issues, I, I sent the script issue six and Kagan uh, struggled with it um, in between his day job as a freelance illustrator and, you know, uh, uh, family man um, couldn't quite find the time and it's hard to justify because um, comics sometimes don't make a lot of money you know yeah. <laughs> he's got to put food on the table Captara issue six wasn't high on <laughs> on uh, on his uh, priority list um, but I was lucky that uh, uh, a year or two ago um, I got a, a, a grant deal from Substack which uh, provided me the opportunity to finish it to be able to kind of front um, Kagan um, the financial means to devote time to continue this. Um, and now that that part is done, um, we can actually get it back into print again. So through Image Comics, we've got volume two starting to come out in single issues and then eventually a trade. Yeah, that, I mean, that that's that's a wonderful story. And that in itself, being able to bring about that, that the, the value given bequeathed to you by the Substack deal to be able mm -hmm. to do that, that must have felt really good. Oh yeah, for sure. Because like in in the years since the first volume, like I would do signings and people would like um, ask about it a lot. Uh, yeah. But also like there are a few people that had like tattoos yeah. <laughs> of Captara characters, and like you know uh, asking when it's coming back. And it's it's hard when someone's got a tattoo of your work to be like I don't know. Um, so actually being able to kind of put a put a bow on it and and yeah. give a, a satisfying ending has been great. Yeah, oh, and Kagan's yeah. grown as an artist too in that time, so it's it's so wonderful to see his work again like that. And it, and it's great that you're working with him again on it. That's a, that's a, a a beautiful part of this outcome, I think. Yeah, I mean he's he's everything. Like like yeah, he he draws it and colors it, and uh, and his work's just so gorgeous. He's one of those illustrators that like everyone knows who he is in the illustration world, and in comics, all the comic artists know who he is because he's just he's like. If Mad Magazine was still around, he'd be like their main artist. I think like he's great, cool, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's so good at like creating worlds and and dynamic poses and uh, expressions and comedy. Uh, so many of the gags in there are are strictly him. He's uh, a, a towering talent. And the world got to see a lot of his work uh, over the past year because he actually did the illustrations for the end credits of the She Hulk TV show. Right on. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. They're, they're I beautiful. haven't made that connection. Of course, they were yeah, they yeah. were they were really good. Yeah, they're, they're, yeah. They're, they're a great part of that show. I thought. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. it's pretty awesome. Yeah, because they presented almost in a semi-animatic style as well, weren't they? When you saw them at the end of the show. Yeah, yeah. He worked with a company to kind of yeah make them kind of move and shift and and stuff because yeah. um, they wanted kind of like courtroom style drawings, and he he did that. It was it's so funny because like you know he's one of my best friends and i didn't know he was doing it because he wasn't allowed to tell me <laughs> so he was like he was yeah it turns out he was seeing all these episodes with like daredevil in it and stuff and i'm writing wow. daredevil and he just couldn't tell me so i was angry at him for a couple of weeks <laughs> that is as a brilliant evocation of the way the marvel machine actually works just the yeah. fact that you know you're both in that daredevil space and you couldn't have that conversation no i know it's yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a bit of a shame and I, I think you, 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 your Mad Magazine analogy. Now that, uh, now that I, I, one of the things that really works about those those uh, She Hulk illustrations is, he's got a real feel for caricature, hasn't he? And capturing yeah. you know, like likeness without it being pure likeness. You know, it's very, very yeah. It's he's amazing, amazing he, and he's, he's he spends his spare time like if he's watching TV, he's drawing the characters on the TV, and he'll post those on his Instagram. They're just like they're perfect. They're just quick ink line drawings and he gets the uh he gets the essence of uh an actor or a character just so well yeah he's he's one of the greatest comic artists uh, around yeah 
Uh, how lovely. And for those who are not familiar with the concept, I might not have picked the book up in 2015. Can you yeah. ease, ease the, the viewers into what Captara actually is? Yeah, sure. It's about a uh, uh, a stranded uh, uh, space mission that uh, crash lands on this planet called Captara. And um, what makes the planet interesting is uh, it kind of stems from when I was a kid and I would play with my toys. I would have my He-Man figures, but I would also have like my Sectors figures or my G.I. Joe's or my Marvel superhero figures uh, interact, right? Like you never... You didn't segregate your toys into different uh, uh, areas. Um, you play with them all together. And I, I, I kept thinking like, oh, it'd be fun to have a planet where it's like, it's like that. Like the He-Man toys are here and the other toys are here. My little pony toys are here. Smurfs are over here, whatever. Um, uh, and, and see how those kind of interact. So it's essentially like, this He-Man style action figure style planet that uh, our hero Keith Conga has landed on. And, uh, you know, he's trying to find his way back home, but he has to navigate um, the ridiculousness of this world. That, uh, that, that, that's very well said. And, and this particular, the new book, what's the jumping yeah. on point for us with the narrative there? Yeah, I mean, we, our cliffhanger of the last book was uh, we unveiled that um, the planet was about to be taken over by this uh, evil woman in named Electra, and we did a double page splash of like 80 supervillains that we created like just so many uh absolutely ridiculous characters so that was like the end point there uh so it picks up from that spot uh in the new volume where um uh while keith is trying to get home the planet is kind of erupting into a war and there's like a a third party that's about to enter the the scene as well uh making all of it quite difficult Brilliant, mate. And, and that new volume of Captara, Universal Truths, is uh, available mm -hmm. for pre-order from the links attached to our conversation. And, That's true. Uh, I'm so pleased that you're getting a chance to finish it off, mate, and particularly in the, in the circumstances and the, in the way that you are doing it. That's a beautiful outcome, I think. Yeah, no, I'm I'm super happy. Like Kagan's almost done the final issue, and it's 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 beautiful and emotional, and yeah, I'm super happy we're getting to do it. Wonderful, yeah. Me too, and, and everybody watching this, I'm sure. Thank you, as always, for joining me, Chip. You take care of yourself, mate. All right. Thanks, man. If you're enjoying watching Forbidden Planet TV and you're enjoying watching us talk to the world's most interesting and accomplished filmmakers, authors, artists, musicians, creators, subscribe right here. See you soon.